volte mi hai deluso, ogni volta non ci credo e ogni volta mi ho solo. Vari nel nostro cuore, ma qui la siamo da sola. Fatti sognare ancora, fatti gridare ancora, cantare ancora. Vari nel nostro cuore, ma qui la siamo da sola. Tanti viaggi con gli amici, tanti posti sconosciuti, infiniti innamorati di un sogno. Canto sempre con orgoglio, anche quando sono stanco, mai nessuno può distruggere il mio sogno. Vari grande amore, vari. Vari nel nostro cuore, ma qui la siamo da sola mai. Vari nel nostro cuore, non qui la siamo da sola. Vari nel nostro cuore, non ti lasciamo da sola. brand new edition of the Staten Island Soccer Report, live tonight from the studios of CTV. Alongside me tonight, we got Vito back. Vito found his way back, and on the other side of the glass, thank you to Roman to get us going tonight. We're not Roman. We don't have a show. Um, Vito, welcome back. I don't know what happened to you last month, but it's okay. I took the mask off. It's okay. Well, you're, you're John, you're going to have so much to talk about that we might yeah. need three or four hours because yeah. it seems like the yeah, soccer right. world yeah. stood still when the death of Diego Maradona and then Paolo yeah. Rossi to follow, how fitting that the Argentinian legend dies and the Italian legend dies, Mr. Yeah. 1982. So you know, we have a, a, a ton of topics to, to go I through. I got through. some stats, but you you just blow me away with all the stats you got there. So I'm, I'm a psycho encyclopedia. Yeah, so friend. Vito, well, let's, you know, of course, we got the Bares, uh sign behind us, and right on the television side, I could see it. Uh, Bodies on a little bit of a roll. We said we weren't going to really talk a, a lot about them because they're in the third division in Italy, City of Chi. But, you know, they're seven points out with a game. They got a game in hand. Uh, they got, a, in my mind, you know, a tremendous game on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. We have problems with, uh, with the Sicilians, uh, you know, Palermo, to well, be specific. You know, John, um, so. I'll be honest. I didn't think that Body was going to trail their Nana. Vincenzo says, you know, they were good back in his days. But yeah. I thought, you know, if there was going to be a team we were going to trail, maybe I thought it might have been Palermo, maybe it might have been Catania. Um, oh. I did not think their Nana was going to be the team. Like last year, we trailed Regina the whole season. The whole way, right. But this year, I didn't expect this to happen. But you know what? There's still a lot of games that's left. But that's the beauty of, the, uh, of soccer, right? You never know. So Palermo got off to a slow start, but that, it seems like they're climbing the ladder now, okay? Yeah, uh, okay, well, so we'll, we'll see what happens, but um, I mean, a memorable uh, Body Palermo game was the game that um, Body won, 
in Serie A with uh, Barreto scoring goals, I remember. I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, that's the last time they beat Palermo yeah. back in say, 2009, yeah. I think it yeah. was. So. it was a long time ago. You know, but um, I tell you, uh, you know what? If your yeah. body, the fans don't have the patience to wait anymore. You no. know, they want to see them and be right now. It's just uh, unfortunately, we have to wait. And look, we, o- we know from past experiences the playoffs is a tough road. Right to take, so they gotta win the division. They gotta win the group. City oh, of yeah. They gotta win City of oh, sure. One more stat, and before we move on, because I know you got a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Body Palermo history. Body's only got two wins versus Palermo. We just mentioned back from two thousand and nine, yeah. uh, four losses and three ties. All right, Palermo's had that way with us. We gotta go to Palermo Wednesday, and we gotta beat them. Of course, listen. We've you, got to beat if them. If you want to get to where. Y- you know, your destination is and your, your mission is to, to win this group, there's no excuses. Right. You have to get the job done. It doesn't matter who you play. Yeah. If you want to be among the best and get to the upper tiers, you have to uh, get it done. Look, you mentioned it a moment ago where Palermo should have been on top there. You, you thought they would be the team that we'd be battling. Maybe they got off to a slow start, but they're kind of rolling now. So you want to beat them Wednesday and well, keep them down. Sure. I mean, speaking of rolling, look at Foggia. They're ahead of... Uh, Actually, they're ahead of Palermo. They're 24 points. They started at yep. the bottom, yeah. well, and look at them now. I'll get to Foggia in a minute. I spoke to Vincenzo, which yeah. we have to get him on the yeah. phone line. Well, Foggia's playing Paganese. That's their next game. Foggia's coming up, too. Yeah. Foggia's on a roll, well, also. They're going on the road. Uh, that's their next game. So yeah. Palermo is uh, bodies on the road. Foggia's on the road for the next game. Right. Body <clears> in their last five games, one Draw and three straight victories. So right. that's the story. Yeah, and it's nice to see Forja coming up also yeah, with yeah. body. So hey, listen, maybe maybe one and two, right? First and second place. And what's surprising, John, is Balotelli. Yeah. Not even in Serie A. Like last year, he was with Brescia, and now you know Monza gave him a chance. And Monza is a team that's owned by Bellasconi. Um, Galliani's the director there. And the last time Galliani and Berlusconi were in control, <coughs> they owned AC Milan. Mm-hmm. But now their mission is to get them to Serie A. Monza is not wasting time. From D, C, they're in B right now. Oh, that's and to be honest, they want to get there. And maybe this year could that's be... That's the way to do it. Maybe this is the year that they can do it. And right. they have a great tandem of Balotelli and uh, Kevin Prince Boateng. There's a lot of uh, offensive uh, weapons there. So... Um, right. You know, uh, it's interesting because you look at Berlusconi, he's one of the wealthiest people in the world, right. and he's investing a lot of money with Monza. Oh. Unfortunately, with body, we don't have the resources. We have that. That Before we go any further, you know, let me just shout out to Staten Island Soccer Club. I should have done that at the beginning of the show. All right, shout out to them. Uh, also, you know, not much going on, obviously, with COVID. They shut down a lot of indoor act stuff, yeah. so where there's no soccer going on as of right now that I know of, maybe... I don't know if jerseys have got anything going on. I don't know. But uh, that being said, we got to get Vincenzo on the phone. Yeah, sure. You, you know, I just want to mention, bring him in. this is how smart uh, Bellasconi is. He got him at a free transfer. Yeah. But Balotelli will earn 485000 including well, several bonuses. He does come with some headaches, I'll call it. You know, so let's hope that he stays, you know, under control. I'm talking about Super Mario. Yeah. All he's right? 30 years old. And you know what? Do I it. just feel... By going to the city of B, it's going to hurt his chances to get the national team for the Euros. But maybe if he climbs up, maybe he's got a shot at the mm-hmm. next World Cup. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you want to touch on the MLS before we get into that? Yeah, go uh, into There's so much stuff. So the, Colu- you the go Columbus on. crew. Yeah, one. Yeah. Right. They won the MLS Cup this year. Congratulations to them. Just a couple of notes. Uh, the, the leading goal scorer, Diego Rossi, MLS. Mm-hmm. All right. 14. Uh, 14 goals, only played 19 games. Yeah. All right, the Columbus crew, we just mentioned, beat Seattle 3 nothing. All right? Yeah. Seattle was going for that third cup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, more, one more stat from the MLS. I mean, hey, look, they, they did, you know, they did the best they can, yeah. you know, with this COVID thing going on. All right? As far as yellow cards go, the Orlando City led the league with 54 yellow cards. Mm-hmm. All right? Red cards, Montreal Impact, five red cards, led the league this year. I uh, Just a couple of stats I wanted to throw out there with yeah. the MLS. Uh, New York City FC, you know, um, 
again, it comes down to plays, right? Spending yeah. plays and, and bringing plays in. Sure. You figured they, they would be a little bit better than the Red Bulls because they got the connection with, with Manchester, mm -hmm. right? But so far, we haven't seen anything yet with, with uh, New York City FC. Hopefully, they'll be back in Yankee Stadium playing in March, mm -hmm. all right? The vaccine is coming, as you know. Well, it's here. It's here. All right, it's out there. It's, it's already out there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So well, um, John, I wanted to bring up the biggest news for soccer fans is, you know, every year, who wins the World Player of the Year? I think this might have startled people. Um, there is no Messi or Ronaldo. Usually they've been uh, taking turns oh, who wins the World Player of the Year. This year the winner was Robert Lend Lendovsky, the Polish international, who scored 55 goals, John, in 47 matches, uh, netting yeah. 15 in 10 games as Munich marched to the Champions League glory, which they have. he's won his first, Euro, uh, his first European Cup. And the last time he was in the final, he lost. But he was with Borussia Dortmund in 2013. He lost to Munich. Right. This time he won with well, Munich. And don't forget, they're a powerhouse team. Yep. Right? So and, and, and we don't need to see uh, Messi and Ronaldo every year. Yeah. Uh, right? And um, the world uh, best 11. Uh, interesting. Well, I got the, uh, the women's and the men's. So we got, okay, so Allison Becker uh, winning right. an award. Then Trent Alexander-Arnold, Virgil van uh, Dijk of uh, Liverpool and Netherlands, Sergio Ramos, Alfonso Davies, Joshua Kimmich, Kevin De Bruyne, Diego Alcantara, Leo, Lionel Messi, Robert Lewandowski, the newly crowned FIFA World Player of the Year, and Cristiano Ronaldo. And then you got the women's side with Christine, Christiane Endler, Lucy Braun, she won the world uh, women's uh, best player. Wendy Renard, Millie Bright, Delphine Casta, Casta Carino, Barbara bon Bonacea, Veronica Bouquet, Megan Rapinoe, Pernell Harder, Vivian Madama, and Tobin Heath was right. the best 11 for the women's All side. Right. Well, that's their, their selection. Any, any Italians in the, in the men's side? No, I no. didn't see anybody. Well, well, that's not. I, mean, I didn't see anybody. Um, how, can you have a, how can you select the best 11 and leave out, not even put one Italian player in? Well, there? you know, th th it's just. Not even your boy? Come no, nah, but you know what? Go these, on. These, you know He's what the it is? second leading goal yeah. scorer in Italy. You know what it is, John? Caputo. You know what it is? Um, no, like Italy has not won the Champions League in a long time, and that's a, that's that's what. Oh, well, we're talking about individual. Well, that's talent, why. Yeah. That's you know that's the reason why. Like you look at Lewandowski, he won the Champions League. Now the best women I just mentioned, Lucy Braun. Best keeper on the men's was Manuel Neuer, the German international. Okay. Best women's keeper was Sarah Bada Badahadi. Best uh, men's coach was Jorgen Klopp, the German. Yeah. Uh, the best women's coach was Serena Wigman. And mm. the Pukis Award went to Sun Hung Min. So those are the awards for the year. Okay. All right. So that was interesting. Let's and get Vincenzo's take on it. Let's get. Yeah. Let's bring him in. You know, well, we still got, um, we got Serie A. We got the Coppa Italia. We got, what else? We have the, the World Cup qualifications, which is probably the biggest news of everything. Yeah. Well, you got to so call him. He can't call in today. Yeah. So whenever you get a, give him a call. And we got Alex Morgan coming back to the United States playing soccer in okay. uh, next next year. So did you want to give Vincenzo a call or go y through? Yeah, call him and okay. let him let him chime in. Whatever. Just tell him you're going to go through your stats and we'll have him chime in. Vincenzo, I mean, there's no show without him either. You know? That's true. He's the main man. Hall of Famer. St. Francis College, right? So we got Alex Morgan coming back, which I think I hope all the players follow her back because we need these players. Yeah. All right, and we got all right, we're making a phone call. We got to call Vincenzo. Um, the phone lines here and the studio are down. Yeah, so. there was some. Hello. Hello, Vincenzo. We're calling you from my phone. Um, so we're about to talk about the World Cup qualifications. So we are uh, going live. We oh. are. We are huh. live right now. So. I think the World Cup qualifications is a big thing. I want to really get into it because it's we only have uh, 45 minutes left, and you know we've yeah. got to get onto this. So, right. Vincenzo, on December 7th, there was the World Cup draw in Zurich, Switzerland, and obviously, uh, Group A is Portugal, Serbia, Republic of Ireland, Luxembourg, Azerbaijan. Group B is Spain, Sweden, Greece, Georgia, Kosovo. C is Italy, Switzerland, Northern Ireland, Bulgaria, Lithuania. Uh, D is France, Ukraine, Finland, Bosnia, uh, Bosnia, Pakistan. E is Belgium, Wales, Czech Republic, Belarus, Estonia. Group F is Denmark, Austria, Scotland, Israel, Faroe Islands, and Moldova. 
G is the Netherlands, Turkey, Norway, Montenegro, Latvia, Gibraltar, and then we got H, Croatia, Slovakia, Russia, Slovenia, Cyprus, and Malta, and I is England, Poland, Hungary, Albania, Andorra, San Marino. Last group is Germany, Romania, Iceland, North Macedonia, Ar Armenia, and Likistan. So what I did was I selected, I printed out the, the rosters for the two top teams of each group. Now, Group A, everybody believes that, you know, Portugal will be there as the group winner. Yep. But, you know, nothing is for sure. But we all think that Portugal, bearing any surprises, will be there, you know? I think Absolutely. Portugal should win it, but you know what? Serbia, John and Vincenzo, Serbia is not a bad team. They have uh, Nikola Milkovic from Fiorentina, uh, Sasta Lukic from Torino. They got Vlaovic from Fiorentina. They have uh, Polarov, who is the captain of Serbia. He's with Inter Milan. They have Mac Maximovic from Napoli. Speaking of Inter. And they have Mikovic Savic from Lazio, yep. Lazovic from Verona. Um, Duric from Sassuolo. So they're loaded with a lot of Italian talent. So yeah. Serbia is no pushover. Well, they may give them a big challenge. That's but why we play. Qualify, no, no. It's not two teams that qualify. It's the, the top teams of each group goes through. The second best runner-up of all the groups goes through. And the rest of the second it's places, it's the eight teams go into the round robin where they get four teams. Right. So... You know, it's a lot more. It's more than that detailed. because we know right. four years ago Italy finished second. They went to the playoff and they weren't. You know, they didn't go through. So now we go to Group B, guys, and Group B is made of Spain, Sweden, Greece, Georgia, Kosovo. I believe Spain should win the group, but Sweden could pose problems, and Greece is another team that you know could do a little damage. I mean, I don't think yeah. that Spain. You know, should have a difficult time, but I think Sweden will finish second, in my yeah. opinion. Well, the you Greeks, know? the Greeks are, are a tough team. They, yeah. they they work hard, so you know we, we know their out. history. We know they won a Euro Cup before. They've right. been to World Cup, um, but with Sweden, John, they have Matthias Svanberg, who plays for Bologna. They also have Dijon Kavutski, who what plays about, for Juventus. What about Zlatan? To be honest, he should make the team the way he's playing. Oh, I he'll think be there. He'll be and, there. And um. They also have the veteran who used to play in Serie A, um, Ekdal. Yeah. Ekdal is very good. He's with Sampdoria. He played with a, a few teams in, so, in, in Italy. So, you know, that's Group B. Uh, number, uh, group C is the Italy group. Italy should, should win this group. Yeah. But Who's in it? But you do have Switzerland, Bulgaria, Northern Ireland, Lithuania. Lithuania oh. in the past, John, had two good players. Stankovicius and Denovicius that right. played in Italy. But that's not the Lithuania team of once ago. But there's still no pushover. They may have players we don't know, but they could pose challenges. My, listen, my opinion on, on, on the Italian team, Vincenzo, uh, you got to prove to me, you got to prove to me you belong there. So that's they haven't true. done anything to me Yeah, they, yet. You know what? Now this is the, the competition when it counts. Right. You so, know, so basically, even so though... They've done very well in the Nations League. Now they're going to be in the semifinal. They're playing Spain. Italy was an, it was announced that Italy's right. going to host the uh, Nations League in October. So you're picking Italy with your heart um, or your head? I John, mean, which way you're going to go? Italy is much more improved this year, but mm -hmm. also Vincenzo's very high on Italy. Yeah. yeah, right now, right now, he's, you know, they're, I well, think they're 11th in the world right now. Now, the thing is, yeah, but uh, 11th or 14th, but I'll tell you one thing. you got to respect Italy because now they're in the semifinals of the Nations League. Right. Portugal won it last year. Italy's hosting it. Now, Italy, number 10. Spain, number 6. October 6th. Mark that day on your calendar in San Siro Stadium. And the winner... Gets Belgium versus France October seventh. They're playing in Torino. Are there going to be any fans? Well, it's too early to tell. But, 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 but you know what? I think John and Vincenzo. The in final, October. the final could be in Italy Belgium showdown. Belgium is ranked number one in the world. 
French is number two in the world. We'll see what happens. Vincenzo and Vito, I have not watched Italy as, as much as you guys have. Uh, for me, because to me, I think these games are meaningless uh, as far as competition. Well, they count for rankings. That's it. But yeah. you know what, Italy. So. Vincenzo, you know what the you know, you know what you know what matters to me, Vito. I know the game. When you when you play Brazil and you yeah. beat them, when you play Argentina and you beat them, when you play Portugal and you beat them, when you play Spain and beat them, then come talk well, to me. Now they're going to be playing Spain in, in October. Let's see what happens there. Let's see what happens. And Italy, yeah. 2009, they were third. Uh, they got fifth place in the uh, Confederations Cup. 2013, they got third place. So this is the history. We'll see if they can add another trophy. And ultimately, the Euro Cup is what they the want to win. The last major trophy was? Was the World Cup in 2006. 2006. But the Euro Cup, they have a drought. They haven't won since 1968. That's yeah, the well, biggest there drought. You go. They had but a anyway, chance. with Italy, guys, I think it's important that Nicola Zagnolo comes back. He's a young talent. We'll see if he comes back. Also, did you give up on Caputo? No, no, Caputo's there. He just came back and said, yeah, last week. Is he's, he going to play? He's there. Believe me, he's probably got... Yeah. He's gonna be there. He's Is gonna he gonna be play there. starting? No, I think uh, if uh, we go here and there, uh, <laughs> the Russia will give Daniel Daniel. Well, yeah, he's giving credit. He's not saying anything bad about. No, no. Yeah, he thinks Caputo's got a better shot of making the team than Zaniola. Zaniola's gonna be coming back from a big injury. But here's we'll the see. thing Caputo was out for a little bit, maybe like a month or a month and a half. Right. He just came back this week. So now he's just getting in gear. Still the second leading goal scorer. Listen. Believe me, I don't ex don't be shocked if he scores thirty goals this year. Now, with um Andrea Ranocchia, he is a guy. Hopefully, he will have a great season with Inter because he brings veteran leadership. Mm. Giampiero Ventura discovered him when he was at Bari, right. him and Bonucci. But if Ranocchia could somehow get noticeability with Mancini, Ranocchia brings that leadership, and that's what they need in this Euro Cup. Yes, you do need the young talent. But you need the, the you need lead. a good you mix. Need, a mixture. You need um That's a mixture. you need the experience to guide those young talent. And Ranocchio would be a great addition if he could start getting noticed and playing very well in Serie A. Right. He's very good scoring goals with the header from the corner kick, yeah. and he's a very good defender. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, in the in the second half of the season. Anyway, I'm just saying, uh, when he, the last time he played was 2015 for the national team when Conte called him up in the, the qualification game in August of 15 for the qualification for the Euros. Yeah. So, you know, let's see what it's going to be in the future. But um, Italy, I think the, 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 per the team that poses the biggest threat is going to be Switzerland. All right, let's you know move why? on because we got other yeah. stuff. Switzerland's Quick. got Shakiri, so that's going to be the team that's going to – Probably give uh, them the biggest. Again, story. Italy's got to show us the money. Uh, All right. Uh, show us the money, Italy. Yeah, Switzerland is a competitive team, but you know what? I think Switzerland had a better team in the past, but we'll see. Anyway, we got to move on. Yes, uh, France, quickly. Ukraine, Finland, Bosnia, and Kekistan. To be honest, I believe France will win the group, but. Second place, I think, will be a big fight between Finland, Bosnia, yeah. and Ukraine. But I think Bosnia should get there. France, for sure. Yeah, even though um, Ukraine, they were in the World Cup before in 2006 yeah. when Italy won. And Finland is a, they got, you know. They were a good soccer nation. So that's the thing, you know. That's the challenge. I mean, Bosnia's got Amer Gojic, who plays for Torino. They got Krucnik from Milan. And they got the former Roma and Juventus player, uh, Prajnic. Former. You know? Okay. But, but uh, we know what Bosnia... They have Zeko, who is their best player. So they're going to be tough for France. You know, they'll definitely be right. a worthy opponent. You know, no question about it. All um, right, next group. Next group is E, John. And this is the group made of um, Belgium, Wales, the Czech Republic. Well... Belarus, Estonia. Jo uh, Peter Sikoriak was going to call about the Czech Republic, but the phone lines are down. He was trying to call me on my cell. I honestly think we saw what Belgium okay. did. No respect for well, this team. Well, you're but high last on World them, Cup, right? You're high yeah, on them. But last World Cup, they got third place. Right. No, Everybody's like, ah, Belgium, they're going to they're gonna crash. They're going to choke. They did very good last World Cup. First time in their history, They'll they do got well third again. place. And well. honestly, they should have beaten France in the World Cup. 
I yeah. think the mistake that Roberto Martinez, and I said it numerous times, he didn't bring Nigolan. I know Nigolan is having, not finding playing time like he did last year. Last year, he tore it up with Cali. Right. He had like 10 goals in Serie A. If he could find playing time, but regardless, he's someone that is 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 a missing link that really could get Belgium far. Yeah. Um, I think that Enrico Aguilar, he, he didn't get him. He was talking to the manager, and he said he wanted to go back to Kaiser. Well, you know what? It wouldn't mm. be a bad idea because if he can get the playing time, he needs to play, and, and Belgium needs him because this guy, he's a big help to Belgium. Anyway, I think Belgium wins it, but you also got... Wales, the Czech Republic, and Belarus. Those three teams, John, they're going to fight. They're going to duke it they'll out. Be, yeah, they'll be tough. Yeah, absolutely. But I think um, Wales will get second because we saw Wales, honestly, their only Euro Cup appearance, they got third place, and th- they got a semifinals appearance when in 2016. That? Wales. Oh, okay, recently. And That's not too long. their only World Cup appearance. So when they ap- appear for the first time, they go far. Their only World Cup appearance in 1958 in Sweden, they got sixth place, quarterfinals. Wales... They got uh, Gareth Bale and they got Ramsey. Yeah, but, that's 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 but you know enough. what? They used to have Ryan Giggs. Yeah, that's not enough. I know, but in this group, you know what? You Czech Republic. Y- y- Czech Republic poses a problem. I think, and Belarus used to have the former body player Kutuzov, Sergei Gorinko in the past, and they still have players that might not be in Serie A, but they all Belarus yeah. is not a a team to mess with too. They're tough. Um, so I have Belgium and Wales going through, but this is a difficult group. You never know who can get second place here. And who's going to be a starting player, too? Well, you know, that so that, yeah. yeah. Now, Group F Group F is going to be Denmark, Austria, Scotland, Israel, Faroe Islands, Moldova. Moldova. Honestly, Denmark should win the group, but you got Austria, Scotland, and Israel. That's up in the air. Israel, to be honest, yeah. left... Es- Israel last time gave Italy problems. We barely beat them in qualification four years ago. We yeah. beat them by one goal. They're getting, they're getting better. And, and Denmark is ranked 12th in the world. Denmark won the Euro Cup in 1992. They won the, the Confederations Cup in the yeah. first and only appearance in 1995. And um, Denmark's best finish in the World Cup was 1998. Eighth place quarterfinals. You know what Denmark is made of. They got Simon Kajar of AC Milan. Christian Eriksen of Inter Milan. They have uh, Mikel so be the Demsgaard of Sampdoria. Yeah, they'll, they'll be the favorites. You know, and they yeah. have uh, Lagar of Genoa and Larsen of Undinese. So they will be the favorites. They rank 12th in the world. They also have, speaking of Monza, they have Christian uh, Gajar, who plays yeah. for Monza in Serie B. Yeah. And they also have Olsen of Bologna and Cornelius of Parma. So they will be difficult. Um, I have Denmark going through, but... I have Austria finishing second. Austria, um, in the 2008 Euro Cup, when they co-hosted with Switzerland, they got 13th place. That was their best finish ever in the Euros. 1954 World Cup, right, third let's place. Let's go through the history because yeah. we've got time. We're going to do this again. And Austria right, right now, John, is ranked 23rd. Let's just go through the groups because yeah. the history we could do later 1998 on. 1998 was the last <coughs> appearance for Austria in a World Cup. 1998. So we got to do a Serie A. That's important Mostly also. Mostly in Austria, a lot of their players are made up in the Bundesliga in Germany, Switzerland, and they have Austria also. So I don't know what you think, Vincenzo, but I think Denmark and Austria will go through. Yeah. But you know Scotland is going to... It's not going to be easy. Well, Scotland, they, they play the Europe, so yeah. Not, uh, you know, you're not going to win. If you win, you're not going to win any. Yeah. Also, let's go to G. Netherlands, Turkey, Norway, Montenegro, Latvia, Gibraltar. Here's another tough group. Oh, Netherlands. And, and, and to be honest, John, Netherlands didn't qualify like Italy last right. World Cup. The Orange Crush. And you talk about the Netherlands. One more World Cup final and they lose, they'll be the Buffalo Bills because mm. they were finalists in 1978, oh, 74, and Bills, 2010. They, they may win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so now you talk about Holland. They didn't qualify for the last Euro Cup and they didn't qualify for the last World Cup. Well, they're, they're in the same boat as Italy right yeah. now. they got to prove. That's right. Right now they're ranked 14th. You have Hetboro from Atalanta. You have yeah. the, the, uh, the Light from Inter. The, the Vige from Inter. The Light from Juventus. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. They got uh, Darun from Atalanta. And they have Zoet from Spezia. Spezia. And they have Kluivert, the son of 
the great, you know, this is Justin Kleiber, the son of uh, the former Kleiber. Spetsius down at the bottom. But, the yeah, you talk about <laughs> Holland. Well, no, Spetsius climbing up. Well, they're on the bottom, 17th right now. Yeah, they're climbing up. But, um, climbing up. Yeah, 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 no, but they're not at the 20th. But, you know, and this... Uh, Yeah, yeah, they have a lot of Dutch players, but you got to look at, they have a uh, former Roma player, Strootman, the midfielder, he's very good. They have uh, Daly Blind, formerly, he must be the son of uh, the one that played in, in the 90s. But, they, you know, they have Frankie de Jong, they, they're an interesting team. But in second place, fellas, I have Turkey. Turkey is also in uh, the group of Italy for the Euros yeah. in June. But, you know what, you got Montenegro here. Montenegro's got... That's another one of those groups that's up in And you've got Norway, who hasn't, they're hungry, and they're competitive, Norway. they got a few players in Italy, but this is a tough one for second place. It's up in the air. You know, but I... Montenegro... Uh, Montenegro never qualified for a World Cup, but they were close four years ago. You know, they've all split up, exactly Serbia and Montenegro. But you know what? I just think Turkey, with um, with the players that they have, uh, Alian from Sassuolo, Dimrel from Juventus, uh, Colin Glu from AC Milan. I think Turkey just might have enough. The first place they, AC Milan. They have uh, Mert Seaton from Verona. Um, I just think Turkey might do it, but this is not going to be easy. I think these teams, John, are going to sweat it out. Next for group. Second place. We got 27 the minutes. The next group is going to be Group H. H is made up of Croatia, Slovakia, Russia, wow. Slovenia, Cyprus, and Malta. But you know what? The Russians. I don't think Russia wins the group. I think Croatia wins the group. But Russia, one, Slo- but Russia, Slovakia, and Slovenia. Oh one, my one, God! That'd be one two. Whoever wins it. That's gonna yeah. Slovakia, Russia, and Slovenia. It's gonna be close there. Um, you can go with Russia and say, look what they did in the World Cup. They did very well, but they hosted it. Um, I just think um, I have Croatia winning it. This is the rain. You know, the finalists from the World Cup. But also Croatia, they got to get Nikola Kalinic back on the team. He's 32. He's with Verona. If he could do something, um, Croatia, 2008 in the Euro Cup, fifth place. Right. You know we know what they're about. They're a very dynamic force. But I have Slovakia, who's got Skriner from Inter Milan, Gumbier from uh, Salernitana, Kuka from Parma. Uh, they got Lak Buba from Napoli, and I just Buba. think Slovakia might have enough. They also have Dennis Vavro, Lazio, and right. they have uh, Hasarin of Sassuolo and Spalek of Brescia. But Dennis you know Spalek. what? When we talk about, I just want to bring up, Slovakia w- was a team that knocked out Italy in 2010, and the guy who scored the winning goal, Papanek, he signed for body right after he scored the goal. Um, okay. But Slovakia no, in th- Listen, these are great stats yeah. and stuff, but we we got to dedicate a show yeah. to this. We don't have it. Well, whole, we got some. You know? Yeah, I, I'm trying. To, we're almost wrapped up with this now. Hensik, the all-time leading scorer for Monopoly player, 26 goals. 2016 was the best performance by Slovakia in the Euros, 14th place. That was when they didn't yeah, represent that, the and Czechoslovakia. And that's not. That's not good. Yeah, 14. That was when they didn't. In 2010, they knocked out Italy. That was their best performance in the uh, World Cup. That was their only appearance, and that was their round of 16. Right. So this is an interesting group, I think, for second place. Now we go to the last group. Yes. No, no, second to last group. And this is a tough one. Which group is that? England, Poland, Hungary, Albania, Andorra, Santa Marino. Albania is coached by another Italian. Listen, it used to okay. be Panucci, now it's Eddie Reha. Now England, Albania. Albania has never qualified, but they're getting close. They're getting close, yeah. But right, right. you know what? I just can't disrespect Poland because Poland has got the World Player of the Year in uh, Robert Lewandowski, and they're loaded with all the event with all Serie A players. You got they got the, a tandem, John. Of oh, wait, wait, wait. what do you mean the best goalkeeper? Well, they got a a, a one-two punch. They got a one-two punch that are in Serie A. They got right. Chesney from Juventus yeah. and Skorupski of Bologna. Like, you know, I'm not crazy about him. So. I know. But they also have the defender. He's the captain when Lendovalski isn't playing. Right. That's Glick, former body players with Benevento. They have Berorowski of Sampdoria, Rekt of Crotone, Wadilowski of Cagliari. Yeah. Uh, they have uh, Zelensky of Napoli, uh, Carol Lintity of Torino. They're loaded with Serie A players. They also have Milik of Napoli. 
Poland is ranked 19th in the world. Dronikowski, Drun they have a Fiorentina as well. They're a tough team, Poland. And when we talk about Poland, their best Euro Cup finish was fifth place, quarterfinals. They got One. knocked out in 2010. Mm-hmm. No, no, 2016 in the, uh, whatchamacallit, in the, uh, they lost in the quarterfinals. Their best finish, guys, in a World Cup, 1974, third place, 1982, third place. All right, very good. So last group, let's go to the last group. And they always end up with England, and they give England a lot of problems. Um, the last group, fellas, last but not least. is let's Germany, go. Romania. Oh, that's it. You Iceland. said it already. You said Germany. That's it. Yeah, but you got Romania, Iceland, North Macedonia, Armenia, and Lichtenstein. Let's go with Iceland. Well, here's what I got to tell you guys. I the think Germany wins, but the second place, I think, is going to be... The a Germans, h- even on, that, on a bad day, yeah. they're going to win that group. Yeah, but you know what? Romania... We've seen what they've done in the past. And Iceland, we saw what they did in the World Cup. They shocked Argentina by tying the last World Cup. And Iceland is a team that... I go for Iceland. Iceland, in their first World Cup in 2018, they got to the group stage, 28th place. And then in their first Euro Cup appearance, 8th place in 2016. So this was the team that got noticeability. They became the next Cinderella story. Iceland has got a player from Bologna, Bulderson. They're an interesting team, but they also got a player from Venezia, Car- uh, who's this, Carlson, and they got a player from Valdova, Frigelson. But Romania is a team, we've seen their history. Yes. They haven't been in the World Cup in a while, like Norway. We've seen what they can do in a World Cup with George Hodge in the past. So it's going to be difficult uh, for that second place. All right. That's what I have to tell you. That's also, it as far as the groups go, right? That's it for the groups, but... We got to talk about Italy. March twenty fifth, they got Northern Ireland. March twenty eighth is Bulgaria on the road. What uh, is, what's what's this for? This is for the qualification. Lithuania, Italy, March thirty first. Then the Euro Cup. If nothing, it, it should go on. It should be going on this year. June eleventh, Turkey, Italy. Qualifications for? That's not the qualification. Turkey, Italy is the Euro Cup tournament. Right. European. That's in the summer. Yeah. yeah. The three games I mentioned before: Italy, Northern Ireland, Bulgaria, Italy, and Lithuania. Friendly? Qualification for the World Cup. Oh, for the World Cup. Yeah. Oh. Turkey, Italy is going to be the first game June 11th in Rome for the Euro Cup. Italy, Switzerland, June 16th. And Italy, Wales. So they're playing qualifi- qualifying games for the World Cup and, and the Euros in the same year? Correct. Oh, because of yeah. COVID. Yeah. And Italy, Wales, and Rome. And then Italy, Bulgaria will so that's, be. That's a lot. Italy, Bulgaria is going to be the qualification September 2nd. Switzerland, Italy, qualification. So Italy's got Switzerland yeah. in the Euro tournament and yeah. the qualification group. All right, enough with Italy, yeah. the national team. Vincenzo, let's go to City A. Vincenzo, what's going on? Because well, we got time. The next show we'll do that. Yeah, they're very surprising. I thought they would be better, but I didn't expect them oh. to be in first. But you know what? They're not running away with it. Let's they're only it. one point ahead of Inter. Let, let him let him yeah. say his uh, Vincenzo. No, no, Richards, only 13 games in. Uh, you know, only 13 games. A you think long way to go. Long way. Yeah. Long way. And they're only one point ahead of Inter and only four from Juventus. That could be made up. Yeah, I don't know if you, if you, if you watch the game uh, this uh, weekend. Nassuolo and Milan. No, Milan. You, be- your nose, you miss the ball. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, Six point two seconds. Raf- uh, Rafael Leo scored the fastest goal in Serie A history. Yeah. He beat the previous record. Do you know who had the previous record? I texted you that the other day, remember? But do you know who had it? No. 2001, the previous yep. record was 8.1 seconds by Paolo Poggi. 8.1. Former, in 2001, he was with Piacenza. He scored yeah. the goal against Fiorentina. Previous year, he was with Bari. Okay, Vincenzo, back to Milan. Well, Milan, uh, Gianni, I can tell you, um, but still. Long way to go. I Well, Inter's right there. They're right there. One point. One point is nothing. And listen, don't forget about Juventus. They're only four out. That's nothing. Oh, well, listen, first of all, they're uh, nine-time champions, right? Well, it's, uh, you know what? Until, if I don't see Milan beat Juventus, you, then you can't count well, on Well, Vincenzo, tell me if I'm wrong. Juventus is playing 
just the way their manager is, nice and calm, like no, no sense of urgency. That's why they have six draws, six ties, seven wins, right? It's a lot. Right. Well, after Juventus. Well, they got they got to beat Milan. Well, I just said they have to. And they got to beat Inter, obviously. Well, you know what? Look at Roma. I know Vincenzo in the beginning of the season really didn't give them any oh. any chance, but Roma's there. But they got twenty four points. They're in fourth place. Then you got Napoli crawling there, twenty three. Sassuolo, the surprise, 23. Atalanta, 21. Uh, Sassuolo Lazio, dropping 21. Down. Verona, 20. Sampdoria, 17. Udinese, 15. Benevento is doing well. They're holding their own at 15 points. Fresh from well, you got to mention your team, number six. They're dropping down. Sassuolo. They yeah, well, that's okay. Cagliari, 14 that's points. Okay. Bologna, 14 points. Parma, 12. Fiorentina, 11. Spezia, 11. Torino, 7. Genoa, 7. Crotone, 6. Surprisingly, Torino. Nobody would have. Th- I thought with this coach, I didn't think they. And they lost a lot of close games. Oh, they'll be in B next year, playing well, against Bari. Let's see what happens. Um, but uh, Genoa. Oh, they just got a new coach, right? Fiorentina. What's the problem? I don't know. Something you like know something what? is not working with Fiorentina. And you know what? It's not like they're not g- they replaced him with a good coach. I mean, we know what Brandelli I mean, is. The simple answer to that is is players. Money. Something yeah, there's strength. injuries, they're dealing with injuries, they're dealing with a combination of things. But you know what? We still got a long way to go. Um Sometimes, it, sometimes it's not what's on paper. I know, but you know what? Yeah, sometimes but it's not what's on paper. That once counts. again, yeah, but once again, in Italy, the top five teams are, are, the, are the regular teams. Yeah. The only team that is slacked off a little bit is Lazio. What about the goal scorers, guys? I really want to mention that. Ronaldo, I know at the beginning of the season, Vincenzo said Ronaldo will win the scoring title. He leads it right now with 12 Wait, goals. Vincenzo, you said that? He did say that. Listen, Ronaldo, um, Let me speak. He, he failed to go. Yeah. Vincenzo called it. I remember in the beginning, he says Ronaldo win the scoring title this year. He right now, he's two. got 12. Um, Lukaku is behind him with 11. Ibrahimovic has got 10. Who leads the league? Ronaldo, 12. 12, okay. Lukaku, 11. Ibrahimovic, 10. It looks like Ibrahimovic has got a new... He's reborn, Ibrahimovic. He missed yeah. the penalty. Andrea yeah. Bellotti's nine, Immobile eight, uh, Mik- Mikitalian, the Armenian, got seven, Quariella six, Soriano six, Walt Gial Pedro six, hey, six, Berardi six, Lozano six, uh, we got Nozolo six, Zecco five, Francesco Caputo five, but he's a guy that missed a lot of games. Vincenzo, how old is Quagliarella? He's. Uh, He's got to be 90 at least. He's uh, still going. He's a year younger than me, I think. Maybe my age. Yeah. Um, yeah, these guys, they're they, <laughs> uh, they come to what, what, you, what you want them to do. Right, yeah. No, you he's know what? And he's a good guy, too. He's you know what? Player. Caputo this year, John, one penalty kick and hasn't missed. Last year he had a few misses, otherwise right. he would have scored more yeah. goals. I think Caputo, don't yeah. be surprised this week if he's ready and, you know, if he, if he puts one in or two in because he knows – He's missing that goal. And you know that he's got a homemade beer company? Every time he scores, he makes the... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, he does that gesture. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, mm-hmm. Luis Ro- Morel, five goals. Giovanni he's drinking a beer. <laughs> Giovanni Simeone, uh, the son of the great Diego Simeone, five goals. Lutaro Martinez, five. Gervinho, four. Filippo Calcedo, four goals. Gervinho. Alejandro Gomez, four. Dress Mertens of Belgium, the Napoli player, four. Insigne, Lorenzo Insigne, four. The brother, Roberto yeah. Insigne, plays for Benevento. He's been scoring lately. Benevento. Alvaro yeah. Morata, who at the beginning, John says, I don't think it's a good move. He's got four goals at Juventus. Yeah. Uh, Simi from Crotone, four. Castrovilli, the Barres player for Fiorentina, four goals. Kisi from Milan, four goals. 
Jen Tso, the Czech Republic player, has got four goals for Sampdoria. Hikami has got four for Inter. Uh, Davan Zapata, the Colombians, got three. D'Ambrosio, three. Pedro Rodriguez, three. Uh, Destro, three. Zurich, three. Galbanov, three. Lapadula, three. Caprari, right. three. Amani, three. Pesca, three. DePaul, three. Petania, three. Politano, Beric, and Milatovic, Savic, three goals. All right, Vincenzo. Uh, what, anything else on City A? Because we want to talk about little just, City A B. Just a few more I just want to mention. Busetto, three. Gossens, three. Zakani, Lukic, Hernandez, and Bobby. Three okay. goals. Those are all three goals. All right, thank you, Vito. Vincenzo, what else on City A? Yeah, they both. Yeah, they both win. Yeah. Yeah, they play together. At the end of the game, you don't know which one coach is the better. Yeah. Which one is the And uh, John Kinder, I think, is really uh, a nice gesture. They, uh, you know, they uh, uh, they give like air bo air bowling, uh, high five. Right. And uh, you know, everybody in the park like this is nice. Everything is really nice. That's it. Correct. Swim bubbles. Yeah, sportsmanship. John and Vincenzo, we didn't get to Serie B. I got the standings for yeah, B and the upcoming Coppa Italia game. Well, look, Serie B. Since you mentioned, let's talk, let's touch on that. We got about ten minutes to yeah. go. Ten minutes yeah, and yeah, the no final problem. show of Where twenty. Is Serie B. Serie B. Empoli. Empoli, former Caputo team. They're and leading the way with twenty six points. Yeah. Salernitana, twenty five points. Giampiero Ventura was their coach last year. Frosinone, twenty four points. Cittadella, twenty three. Cittadella. Spal. They were in Serie A last year. They got 23. Oh, they're still hanging around. Venezia, 22. Lecce, 21. Monza Regina. is climbing up with Balotelli, 20. Chievo, 19. Brescia, 17. Pordunone, 17. Pisa, 17. Vicenza, 15. That's where Paolo Rossi right. started. Right. Yeah, Vicenza. That was, uh, you know, that's uh, what made his career. Uh, Re Reggiana, 14. The Cos team that beat Bari. Struggling, right? In B. Oh, Vincenzo? Yeah. No, Vin last year in the final. Uh, no, no, in the no. the playoffs. No, no, it was, it was, uh, that was the other one. This yeah. is Reggiana. Regina. Right. Regina. That's Reggiana. Okay. Reggiana was the other one. Cosenza oh, 12. Calabria, Reggiana, Pisa, yeah. Regina. Yeah. Cosenza 12, Cremonese 12, Pescara 11, Regina 10. They are Struggling. third to the bottom, and they are the other ones that beat by. Maybe, like, maybe they'll be back in C. Who knows? Ascoli 6, and Virtus and Della. Five points. That rounds off Serie B. What's their points, Re Regina? Regina's got ten, and first place is twenty-six. And the team above them has eleven. Pescara. Yeah, so, all right, still, yeah. so that's Serie B. Um, the other thing we got to mention is the Coppa Italia, January twelfth, Milan Torino. That's going to be twenty forty-five military well, yeah, time. Well, you know Milan has got that game. January thirteenth, fifteen o'clock military time. Fiorentina Inter. Right. Uh, January 13th, 1745 military time. Nampo Napoli, Empoli. January 13th, 2045 military time. Juventus, Genoa. January 14th, 1730 military time. Sassuolo, Spal. January 14th, 2115 military time. Atalanta, Cagliari. January 19th, that's my mom's birthday. 2115 military time is Roma, Spezia. January 21st, 21-15 is Lazio Parma. You know, Juventus hasn't done well in this tournament the yeah. last couple of years, so. Well, yeah, well, last year they didn't win it. Right. Um, the quarterfinals will be January 27th. The winner of A the win plays the winner of B. The winner of C plays D, right. E, F, and yeah. G, H. And the semifinals will be February 3rd. And then that's the day of the groundhog day. And then you got the uh, final. You got the 10th is the two is the semis and the ten the third and the 10th. Right. And the final will be May 19th. Okay, Vincenzo, what do you think about the MLS you know Cup? On the Inter, I guess. Inter? Yeah, he, he's always high on Inter. Coppa Italia, Scudetto, Vichy. For Inter. Inter. Well, okay. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, that's not a bad pick anyway, right? They're not, they're not yeah, a bad we'll, team. We'll so, see, we'll see. Vincenzo, did you watch the MLS? The, 
the Champions League. I yeah. just want to bring up, yeah. Sean and Vincenzo, those other games. When they return back from the Euros, well, hopefully, guys, June 20th, Italy versus Wales in the first round won't be the last game for us. Hopefully, they'll go far in this Euro tournament. I'll see. But yeah, I'll see. then, whenever it's said and done, if they win the Euro Cup or whatever happens, Remains. then they got to go September 2nd. They got It's Italy, Bulgaria at home. Qualification. September 5th is Switzerland, Italy in Switzerland. Right. September 8th is Italy, Lithuania in Italy. And then October 6th, Italy, Spain for the Nations League in Milano. October 10th, Italy versus to be determined if it's the third place match or the finals. Right. And then uh, November 12th is Italy, Switzerland qualification. And then the 15th of November 2021 is Northern Ireland versus Italy. Northern Ireland has former Palermo player yeah. uh, Lafferty. That's their best play on Northern Ireland. And also, guys, you think well, that they got the Italian Federation is going to squeeze in some Euro Cup tune-ups, yeah, probably. You got, yeah. you know, well, March. I don't know. They got a lot of stuff well, going on. Well, you know on. what? They their got a lot going on. Their last qualification is March yeah. 31st. Then their first Euro game is June 11th. You mean to tell me there's not going to be games? They're going to probably squeeze in a couple of All right, of games. enough with this uh, Italian national team. They got to win games before we talk about them again, especially on this show. Yeah. Right, Min Chen? Italy on the map. Yeah. Well, the only thing that Italy's going to get the respect, Vincenzo and John, you win the Nations League, you open up eyes. You win the Euro Cup, you open up bigger eyes. That's where you got to win. If you win the World Cup, then you're the best. You got to win the Euros. You know? Because, you know, know, people, Italian fans, you know, they all wanted to play soccer when they saw Mr. 1982 Paolo Rossi win the World Cup for Italy. Something that. At yep. the funeral, Roberto Baggio says he couldn't do for Italy, you know. So, like, uh, there was a lot of dreamers when Paolo Rossi, you know, when Italy wasn't even picked in 1982. Vincenzo can yep. tell you that Germany, Brazil, everybody had everybody else winning Well, it. that's the beauty of the game. I mean, you know, the underdog, right? You know, and even so. in 2006, a lot of people weren't high in Italy, and yeah. they won that one. Uh, listen, um, Vincenzo, we got about five minutes. So, what would you think about the MLS Cup? Did you watch that final? Yeah, it was on. All right, if you missed it, it's okay. It was on Channel Five. Columbus uh, beat Seattle. It was a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we got to bring up because Diego Maradona was probably the second best, first or second best ever. And yep. he, you know, it's it's crazy because it seems like when he passed away, it looked like soccer died. It looked like you know the world, oh. like you know, basically the morning, the the outcry, you know, the outpour for him. But. Um, you know, he promised Napoli titles, and he delivered those two titles, and they could have yeah. even won three. But Napoli wasn't even noticed until Maradona came there. Oh, of course, it takes, yeah. Okay. Until Maradona won those titles, right. then all of a sudden, Napoli was looked at differently. So, I mean, he's honored as a saint, obviously, and that's, he right. got the name, his name, name, you know, the stadium after him. Yeah. So, Vincenzo, if you wanted to say anything, go right ahead. He had Careca, he had, uh, he had uh, Carnevale, he had uh, Fernando Di Napoli, Chiro Ferrara. No.
right shoulder. Even though he played number eight, yeah. I chose the name I wanted on the side. Yeah, yeah, Parkinson. Yeah, and that's what I mean. That's where they're going to get back on the map if they beat yeah. countries like and, that. And um, speaking of Paolo Rossi, I showed you the picture that my uncle had with his friends at the airport. I was actually right. there at the airport, but uh, yep. they took a picture together. Yeah. There was a tournament yeah. organized by Manfredi for the yeah. World Stars against Italy, yeah. and it was in 1990, and they were there. <laughs> it was a nice picture. But um, you know what? All right, Vincenzo. You know look. what? Some of these players... We got, we got about two and a half minutes. Um, some of these, like the legends, they're always eternal. Yeah. Like you look at Kobe yeah. Bryant, anybody, anybody. Well, look, look, no, you're uh, you, you're not going to compare the two. But, you know, you got players Vincenzo that you know on and off the field are great. Then you got players that are on the field great, off the field terrible, horrible. Okay. And yes, right. So, so y- n- I'll give you an example. All right, uh, all right, uh, Pirlo, Pirlo, you never had worried from him, right? Yeah. He's great on and off the field, right? So, you know, that's just a, a quick example. Yeah, but the bottom line is, what Diego Maradona made soccer, because it, it, when, uh, when people were growing up, forget about the other stuff, people wanted to be Maradona because the way his dribbling skills, the, the speed, the yeah. amount, you know. Look at Pele. Yeah. Never heard a word yeah, off no, the field. No, different people. Pele was But, but you got to, yeah. you got to, yeah. listen, everybody wants to be that great player, but you got to be, if you're going to be that role model, and we got about another minute and a half. You got to be great on and off if you're well, going to be that role model. Look at Pele. He's if I want to be like Vito, Vito's got to be perfect. There's no such like thing as perfect. Well, close perfect to it. Perfect doesn't exist. There's well, no. Well, for me, for me, look at look at look. No, at nobody's perfect. Take a Pele. Yeah. Take a Pele. Yeah. He's pretty much pretty no, close. That's what I'm, I'm just saying now. No, um, you look at Pele, it's a different argument. But Pele, he's still going. He's 80 years old, and he's still, you well, know. Look, if you take going. a kid, you know. Listen, for well, me, uh, you look at the two best that ever played, Pele Maradona, look, arguably. Cup. You look at basketball, Jordan, Kobe. Yeah, but you got to act professional off the field. There's images that we've seen with Maradona. Of course. In stadiums. No question about right, it. Right, has done things that you don't want the, the young guys no to see. No question about it. You know, when, when uh, I, I was just focusing on talent-wise. When you talk about no, talent, uh, absolutely. that's it. Absolutely, yeah, but, but you team. have to have, you got to be a great player. You have to have that off the field, too. You can't just. I tell you. You know. If they had well, the... Uh, look at Mario. Yeah. Bolotelli's another one. Yeah, that's Great true. talent, but, he, but he's a hothead. He's yeah, that's true. He's a nut off the field. But you know what? Let's hope for the better that Bolotelli could really pour it on because you know what? He I can listen, contribute. Listen, I love that he guy. You go back and look at all these shows. He can contribute. If he's well, if he's on his game, there's nobody better. If he's on his game. Listen, he's on the national team if I'm coaching him. Anyway, Vincenzo, we've got about 30 forget seconds. Forget about Bolotelli, the national You're right. I know. It's a dream. Again, yeah. It's well, a, I, I know, it's a dream now. It's, over. Yeah. it's it's too late now for him. Anyway, Vincenzo, I want to thank you again for coming on the show the whole year. Every month that you, you know we do a show, you come on. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year to you and your family, Vincenzo. Thank you, Johnny. Buon Natale a tutti. Buon Natale. All right, we'll Buon see you soon. We'll talk to you soon, Vincenzo. Now thank you again. Now the question is, who are going to be, John? Ciao. 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 Now, when you look at um, every generation... There's always a, right, a few cu- greats. We're cut yeah, there's down always a few greats. There's only seconds. there's a few greats that come along. Now it's Messi, Ronaldo. Yeah, you know, and then they're almost done with their career. They got a few more years. Then you're gonna say who's gonna be? People watching are saying legends are dying. All right, Vito. Who's ready to be the Vito, next wrap best? it up. Merry Christmas, Happy New so, Year. Thanks to Roman again on the other side of the glass, and thank you to all the viewers. Merry Christmas. Have a happy you. New Year. We'll In see you guys. 2021.